Hello, welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. We continue our lessons on Excel's financial functions. Today, we focus on the future value or the FV function. Let's see how this works. The future value FV function tells us the amount that our investment will be worth in the future. Now, this is not guessing. This is not a soothsayer or a crystal ball or a betting parlor. The future value is based upon a series of assumptions. In this case, our assumptions are that we will invest $3,000 once a year for 10 years. The FV function requires a fixed interest rate, not a variable. So the fixed interest rate that we will receive is 5% to calculate our future value. Let's see how this works using a different set of assumptions. Only a 3% interest rate for three years. Our investment is once again $3,000. Notice that I have made it a negative number. This is money coming out of our checking account to return a future positive investment number. Okay, over here in cell D8, let's start our function. Equals FV left parentheses. And at this point, I like to use the control A shortcut to bring up our function arguments dialog box. The interest rate D3 is our cell, 3%. The number of periods is the three years that we're going to be investing for in cell D4. Our payment that we are going to be making is an investment coming out of our checking account, $3,000 in cell D5. Those are our required arguments. They're indicated by bold labels. There are two optional arguments. The PV, or the present value of our investment, before we start making our contributions, is zero. Now, the type, it does matter when we invest. At the beginning of the period, indicated by a 1, or if we leave it blank, Excel says you'll be making your investment at the end of the period and it will put a zero in there. So we'll make a cell reference over here so we can see the difference in investing at the beginning of the period or the end. So our future value will be $9,550.88. Let's see what that investment would be if we invested at the end of the period with a zero here rather than at the beginning of the period only $9,272.70. So you see it does make a difference when we invest. Okay, you've probably noticed by this point that the functions that we use in financial calculations, FV and, and per number of uh, periods, PMT, the payment, we also use those as arguments inside some of our financial functions. Let's demonstrate. Over here, we have a savings goal. We want to be able to have $50,000 at the end of 15 years, making a monthly investment and at a fixed interest rate of 5%. In order to achieve that, we must invest $186.29 each month. Let's go through this step by step. Over here, let's change our goal to $40,000, our fixed interest rate 3%, 18 years, once again contributing once a month, so 12 payments per year, and will invest at the beginning of each month. Equals PMT and left parentheses. Control A brings up the function arguments dialog box. Okay, our interest rate here in cell D4. Now remember that it is going to be a monthly contribution, so we have to divide that annual interest rate by the number of payments per year, the number of months in the year. Okay, the number of periods is the number of years, 18 years, times, because it's going to be a monthly contribution, times 12, or cell D6. The present value, well, we haven't started to save yet, so that is zero. The future value in this case, in this case, it's not going to be an optional argument. Our future value is going to be our savings goal. So we must fill that in for this to work. And again, the type, let's make a cell reference. Click OK. And there you go. So to reach $40,000 at 3%, making a monthly contribution for 18 years, we'll need to contribute $139.54 at the beginning of the period. If it's at the end of the month, then our contribution is slightly increased, $139.89. 
well, we can do a lot of what ifs and change. What if we were able to get 4%, for example? Then our contribution goes down. Well, to make this a little bit more systematic or to do it with one calculation, let's use a data table. Let's unhide some cells down here. OK, here I've created a data table for various interest rates. What if, what if instead of 5%, our fixed interest rate annually was 2% or 2.5% or 3%? Here's how we structure a data table. For right now, let me remove these values. OK, so our formula is here. It's the PMT function that we use to calculate our monthly investment to reach our savings goal. Over here in the column, we put a series of interest rates, which we'll substitute for this cell inside our formula. OK, now to set up our data table, once we have our substitute values one cell down and one cell to the left of our formula, then we highlight the area that will contain our return amounts. And now we'll go up to Data. We'll choose Table. And now remember, we've put the substitute values running down a column. So it's going to be a column input cell. These are interest rates, so they're going to substitute for this cell in our formula, in our function. Click OK, and there we have it. So at 3.5%, we'd have to contribute $210.99 each month. Well, there you have it, an introduction to the FV function and how FV is also one of the arguments inside the PMT function. We'll see you in the next Tips and Time Savers.